return next one is the repayment and third one is the risks is not it on a return we have to judge on what estimate the additional cost and the additional return and we should look for the particular point that whether the additional return sufficiently cover the additional cost or not and it is arise only because of what only because of the what because of the diversification of the existing cropping pattern to get the better productivity is not it that is the introduction of a new crop elimination of the non numeric crops all these things are generally done and here we have to make two budgets that is one as the budget for existing plan and one other for alternative farm plan okay by investing the money in, in the form of borrowed money in the form of borrowed money okay by adoption of the higher technology there we have to adjust generally additional cost involvement and our objective is there is there to get the additional return is not it so we should look for that particular point that whether the additional return sufficiently cover the additional cost or not then next uh, uh, objective is to go for the estimation of the repayment capacity of the borrower is not it repayment capacity i have given the calculation of repayment capacity and there only one difference is on the estimation of repayment capacity regarding the classification of the credit in relation to the classification of the credit that is repayment capacity in one way we may go for the liquidating loan and another one is the estimation for non liquidating and partially liquidating loan is not it then third one is the risks that we have to estimate the risks okay then there's the one way for estimation of the risks generally we have to consider the risk coefficient there that is this difference between the potential yield and the actual yield received by the farmer in that particular situation the gap we are considered in the form of the <coughs> percentage and that percentage simply <coughs> may be called as a risk coefficient and that risk coefficient simply may be deflated along with the repayment capacity of the borrower and that deflated repayment capacity simply may be equated to the risk bearing ability of the farmer and when we got the positive answer for all these three you'll get it in a practical detail by quantifying by considering the data i will give you then you will get that loan advanced by the banking institutions to the farmer is in safe proposition this is the enough in summary that is the regarding three years of credit now today regarding the economic feasibility test of farm credit proposal here we consider the five c's and seven p's of credit five c's and seven p's of credit some economics always try to see examine this the economic feasibility test in different way there we got get the economic feasibility test as three hours of credit here we will discuss the five c's or seven p's of credit same thing we will discuss in a different way okay so this is to get the economic viability of the project project means the enterprise okay the in selection of the enterprise selection of the project we have to submit to the whom to the bank to get the loan and the banker will go for examining the project the where the farmer will invest the loan they will look for entire items then they may go for the estimation of the return okay so likewise in this process the some economics tell this economic feasibility test try to examine this on this in the way as much we consider the five c's of credit you see that is next to three years the other test that can be applied to the study of economic viability of scheme or investment economic viability of the scheme scheme means the scheme that the farmer will submit to the bank okay of the activity known as 5c namely same thing first one is the character second one is the capacity third one is the capital fourth one is the condition and fifth one is simply may be called common sense now what is the character character you know character of whom borrower simple this basic credit in you know, a basic needs of the credit transactions is the character okay generally the banking organizations anchors by this type of things the character that is this on the confidence influenced by the borrower like qualities of the borrower honesty integrity commitment hard work promptness all these character generally lead to the bankers to give loan to the farmers so generally they look for this <coughs> if the farm the any informations are available along with the bank regarding the farmer 
Regarding this type of the variables, that is honesty, integrity, necessarily the bankers will go for the giving loan easily to the farmers. It should be along with the farmers or borrowers. The character means the mental as well as the moral character. And when the farmers have the both good mental as well as the moral character, necessarily the farmers also have the also farmers also have the the farmers which have the good mental and moral character also have the good credit character also. It is the belief of the banking institution. Necessarily good farmers possessing good mental and moral character because this also lead to the credit worthiness of the farmer. The judgment is the credit worthiness of the farmer. The banking organization may look for the quantifying the credit worthiness of the farmer, but on the basis of the his record of the mental as well as the as well as the moral character also lead to the justifying the credit worthiness of the farmer by the banking organization. Do you understand? And second one is the capacity. Capacity is nothing. What is this? You may call as a capacity related to huh? repayment capacity simply. Repayment capacity is a synonym of capacity, synonym to repayment capacity. And capacity is directly can be we given as a C uh, that is equal to function of Y. The capacity is the C, Y is the income, is not it? So, higher uh, farmers along with the higher income, he may ha have the, the good repayment capacity. Simple, same thing, repayment capacity, we can express this repayment capacity in this way, okay? This is synonyms of the repayment capacity. Enough <coughs> to get, okay. In but three years of credit, we can estimate, regarding the three years, we can estimate the repayment capacity, okay? And third one is the capital. Capital is the, capital here forms <coughs> the equity or net worth. When character and capacity is formed inadequate, then capital will the follow what? follow to give the loan to the, by, by the, to the farmers by the banking organization. That because this capital, the equity, that is the investment capacity of the borrower in these enterprises necessarily help the farmers to overcome the different types of risks that are involved in the agricultural occupations. Do you understand? If the farmer in the grip of any type of risks, necessarily the farmer to overcome the risk factors generally this type of things, this is capital or equity help the farmers to overcome the risk. So generally the banking organization also look for this power of the <coughs> farmer that is the, in the form of equity or network, that is the amount of capital available <coughs> along with him for better or future investment, okay? And not fourth one is the <coughs> condition. It refers to the conditions needed to obtaining a loan from financial institution. Yes, I will discuss later on. There are several formalities generally followed by the banking organizations in sanctioning the loan to the farmers. We have to go through the different steps for <coughs> sanctioning the loan or getting a loan by the farmer or sanctioning the loan by the banking <coughs> organization. So all these things are generally considered under this fourth number of C's, that is the four number, the number four C, that is the condition. It leads to procedural formalities like loan application, submission, scrutiny of the records, Loan eligibility criteria of the farmer is checked by the banking organizations. Then they may go for the sanctioning of the final sanctioning of the loan to the <coughs> farmers. And last one is the common sense. Common sense, this is the refers to the perfect understanding between the lender as well as the borrower in credit transaction. That is this, there will be better understanding between the borrower as well as the banker. Banker also look for the, all the conditions, the, that to be prepare, preferable by the bor uh, borrower as well as the borrower also have the faith along with the banking organization. That is this, the bank will help us in when we need. This type of understanding along with the both borrower as well as along with the banker, okay? And all these are things are considered in the form of common sense. So these are the five we are considered in a different way and different economic points of view we consider the five C's of credit in relation to the economic feasibility test, okay? And some economics, again, 
considered these on in other way which are popularly known as seven P's of credit. This is financial institutions while lending to the agricultural sector only consider the not only consider the commercial gains but also the social benefits. This is the important one. Social the advancing the loans to the borrower, the objective of the advancing loans to the borrower by the banking organization not only look for the commercial gains, that is the earning of the profit by the banking organization, but advancing loans to the especially to the agricultural sector being as a prime sector also integrated or related to the the gaining of the benefit at a social desired rate. Okay, because in our economy, this 70 to 80 percent of the farmers are uh, people are in the, the related to this type of occupation. So, to gaining the social welfare or social benefit as a social desired rate, desired rate, generally the advancing of the loan to the prime sector also related to this type of things. So, we consider all these things in the seven way. First one is the principle of productive purposes. Second one is the principle of the personality is coming from again from character then principle of the productivity and fourth one is the principles of the phase disbursement generally followed by the banking organizations only to check the diversion of the credit and the fifth one principle of the proprietalization it related to I have mentioned to you that is the supervised credit that is this supervising of the utilization of the credit after disbursement of the credit to the farmer generally done by the bank <laughs> officials. And sixth one, principles of the payment. It related to the repayment, choosing of the most appropriate repayment plan to the farmers according to the situation. Okay? And the last one is the principles of the protection. That is this, to overcome the risks, the real protective measures are to be taken by the banking organization and given to the farmers to protect the loan. That the loan should be protected it will be beneficial to the banking organizations also that it have the giving the ability to the farmers to overcome the risks okay and how we discuss what is this first one principles of the productive purposes this is coming from this point you see the credit requirement is visible only to all, so to all types of farmers but significant <laughs> on the credit requirement is significant no credit requirement is significant in case of the marginal and small farmer Credit need by all types of farmers, but requirement is significant in case of the marginal small farmers. So, in absence of the consumption loans, I have already discussed the consumption loans are essential. I will discuss later on what is why it is necessary because the marginal small farmers to meet the cash requirement, mind it, to meet the cash requirement or cash demand, okay, in, in their day to day life they generally try to divert some amount of credit as a consumption loan. Okay? So, the banking organization now look for that particular point also. That to give some amount of loan that farmers may use <coughs> some amount of loan is for consumption or as well as to maintain their day to day life okay? or daily life. So, hence the principle, so these principles, productive purposes says that loan disbursed to any borrower should be capable of generating incremental income. Incremental income coming from the what point? That is this, along with the income coming from his main occupation. Do you understand? Along with the income coming from his main occupation, I suppose as a growing of the crop or different types of crops, if the farmers are in, can be engaged by the banking organization in some other allied activities, it will help to the additional income that can supplement to the his major or main income, which will help the farmers to go for increasing his net worth or equity. So, it is given as the short term loans or of the small and marginal farmers can be made productive. Yes, it is productive, but they, they are pro if they are provided with other income aggregating assets through term loans, it should be given. And now the banking organization is taking these principles along with the other types of loans in the form of crop loan or in the form of any type of short loan, short term loans. The farmers, uh, beneficiary farmer already selected by the banking organizations, they also try to disburse some amount of loan as a income generating loans for the income generating, generating the income generating assets. That is this, the income generated from this productive assets will aid to this 
actual income the supplement to his actual income and can be coming from these type of things that is from uh, raising the dairy animals sheep goat poultry installation palm sets are the some examples of the income generating assets and these are the some things that are to be identified at the banking organization as a income generating assets along with the actual loan given by the farmers they generally try to give some type of term loans to this type of income generating assets that their farmers may go for go for the increasing his income which can supplement to the or supplement to his major or main income and which may lead to his lead to the increasing his own savings that he may go for better investment in future enterprises or future investment okay then this is this coming under the principles of the productive purposes generally followed by the banking organization nowadays okay and next one you see <coughs> personality it is simply i have already discussed in c the character same thing is this kind of principles of personality the safe element of the loan is not totally depend upon the security of the loan alone <coughs> yes every every loan most for most of the loan farmers have to give some amount of security it may be secured by the banking organization by taking security in the any form against the loan but after giving the security some farmers may go for the willful default of the loan do you understand security to dear upor dear sotteo they like care no kore they not care about the repayment of the loan and this is the major problem generally facing by the most of the banking organization willful default and due to the willful default again i am repeating here generally most of the banking organizations facing the problem of the mounting of the overdue especially in relation to the agricultural sector okay so the growth of the progress of the lending institutions depend entirely on the personality factor of the borrower so when willful default coming due to the bad character or bad morality of the farmer then which due to the dishonesty habit of the last farmers the borrower substantial funds may be functioning of the lending institution is affected badly inverse inversely affected that is this we may call as simply as a the mounting of the overdues due to the willful default of the farmer in on from the side of the farmer will generally adversely affect on or adversely affect on entirely banking system in relation to the bank loan in relation to the loan to the agricultural sector so the banking organization now look for particular point also that is this how the lowering down the the mounting of the overdues or willful default from the farmer side so they generally care of this particular point they check the personality of the borrower before disbursing loan to the borrower okay the personal record they will generally try to check it then <coughs> principles of the productivity the principle stresses that the credit which is advanced is not just meant for the increasing the production but the enterprise alone but should be able to increase the productivity of the other factors employed in the enterprises that is this other resources along with the major occupation the other resources used in the as, as in the enterprises should also generate ability should also have, have the ability to generate some income to the total income okay so here decision making processes involved so here entirely the principles of the productivity stick on the on particular particular point that i am discuss in the three hours of credit the selection of the enterprise in relation to the present or existing economic agro climatic conditions selection of the enterprise combination of the uh, both suppose crop along with the livestock combination of both so what type of livestock we should consider along with this major occupation as a crop and it should be economic in economical enterprise that we can go for the minimization of the cost all these things all these things are generally considered in the principles of the productivity so here i am giving as an example suppose preparing soib to improve variety among the competing crops that is the selection of the crop i will give you in detail on the 
on the, that preparation of the alternative pump plan, you'll get it. I will give you the view, uh, clue how we can go for the selection of the crops. Next one is the selection of the breed, which is superior among the all alternatives available along with the farmers. Uh, choosing the one which gives the relatively the higher returns. That is this, it can be given, it can be choose by the farmers himself, but the banking organization also before disbursing loan to the farmers, they can give guidelines to the farmers in selection of the better enterprises which can give highest return along with the minimization of the minimization of the cost. Okay? <coughs> and you see principles of the next phase disbursement. And you see, yes, in case of the crop loan, first thing. Crop loan generally given as a short term loan, it is given for one crop season. No matter. In a one installment, entire loan can be used, can be given by, disbursed by the banking organization and entire loan can be used by the farmer for purchasing of the basic inputs and entire loan amount is converted to the working capital. Okay. But in some cases, the loan can be disbursed, loan are generally disbursed by the farmers for a perennial cost suppose. It goes over two to three years or four years like this. And loan amount, total loan amount can be assumed by the farmers or by the farmers as well as the banking organizations. But their requirement for loan in different parts of the period, different periods, okay? So according to the requirement or according to the time of the requirement, the loan can be disbursed, loan should be disbursed by the banking organization. And generally to check the diversion of the credit to the unstipulated purposes, the loan which are used for the, especially for the perennial crops or for the big enterprise are generally disbursed by the banking organization. They follow this type of phase disbursement only to check the diversion of the credit disbursed by the banking organization in a phase manner according to the requirement of the borrower. Suppose the first time the loan is disbursed to land preparation, then loan disbursed for other things. Likewise, they, according to the requirement, that is according to the activity, the loaner generally disbursed, try to disburse by the banking organization and generally face disbursement are generally followed by the banking organization for the ha ha larger amount of loan only to check some, check the diversion of credit to other purposes. That is this generally considered by the banking organization that is for on the principles of the phase disbursement. Okay? That is this loan will be disbursed, entire loan will be disbursed first thing, but one thing is there that <coughs> according to the time of requirement. Okay? And first, fifth one, principles of the proprietary lesson. It related to what thing then? Again? Huh? Uh, optimal use, then you may call as a credit supervision, huh? supervised credit. That term generally used by the banking organization, isn't it? Credit supervision, that the banking organization nowadays not only confine their activities only to disburse credit, but also to, to recover the credit. And better recovering can be assumed by the bank only through the better utilization of the loan by the farmer that they can get the higher income and they may go for the better repayment. Okay? So generally banking organization after disbursement of the credit they may go look for the proper utilization of the credit. Again same thing we are going to discuss as discuss as the principles of the proper utilization. And along with this some facilities which can help the farmers for generating higher income like storage, better transportation, marketing, etc. All our price stability, all our things can be given by the banking organization. The bank may give the information regarding the price, okay? Bank may help the farmers to go for the market, taking the mar uh, facilities from the marketing agencies. They may go for help to go for the transportation, may hold for the storage, that the storage help the farmers to go for better price, uh, selling of the products in the right time at the right price. All these things can be combined in a integrated manner. All these things are generally examined by the banking organizations and help the farmers to go to take this advantage of this type of facilities. Okay? The <coughs> bank officials. Okay? And this is coming under principles of the proper utilization. And sixth one, you see, principles of the payment. That is nothing. It is this choosing of the what? 
switching up just try to switching of what no installment switching of the repayment plans yes i am inform you that i will discuss in the practical that different types of repayment plans are available with the banking organization different types of repayment plan amortized repayment plan amortized increasing repayment plan amortized decreasing repayment plan variable repayment plan these are the some names of the repayment plan available with the banking organizations okay and after disbursement of the loan after utilization of the loan bank will fix the appropriate repayment plan to the farmers the farmers after completion of the crop the farmers may easily go for according to the repayment plan fixed by the banking organization they may go for the repay of the loan we should not give or the banking organization should not advocate this type of repayment plan which can adversely affect on his repayment capacity okay i will discuss in the practical different types of repayment plan available with the banking organizations and generally the banking organizations also look for the economic conditions of the farmer as well as the enterprise that adopted by the farmers according to his income generating possibilities generally the banking organization fix the repayment plan to the farmers and all these things are considered under the principles of the payment do you understand and seventh one last one principles of the protection the farming is always again i'm telling you here farming is always the unfortunate due to the calamities and become generally risky due to the association of the high level of risk during different forms again okay flood drought pest diseases all these things so the credit link with some risk covering instruments to protect the loan by the financial institution financial institution now to protect the loan generally try to link the credit or the amount of loan along with the some risk covering instruments likewise first one is the is most popular new concept now is the most popular that is this insurance coverage that is the one concept is coming is now a days for the farmers that is this taking of the crop insurance advantages of the crop insurance schemes this is crop insurance scheme also detail of the crop insurance scheme also covered under this course i will give you how the bank will go for the crop insurance scheme how we can follow the different methods the estimation of the under different uh, premium under crop insurance scheme all these things will be discussed detail later on and this is the crop insurance scheme second one linking credit with the marketing tie up arrangement i am already inform you the regulated market okay the regulated market is set up by in the public sector by the government okay they mark the after disbursement of the loan the bank organization also give the advice to the farmers to take the advantages of the regulated market that the farmers may sell their produce in a remunerative price by taking different advantages given by the regulated market that they can, he can avoid the farmers can avoid the problem of the distressed sale or the poor sale already i am inform you then provision of the finance against the warehouse receipt yes again this is i also discussed inform you where what is warehouse receipt do you know the warehouse receipt ah uh, yes i am again regulated market they have the warehouse along storage facility in the form of warehouse along with them then farmers taking their may take their product to the way, regulated market and the officials of the regulated market try to keep their product in the warehouse maintained by the regulated market is not it and after receiving or after taking the products of the farmers in the warehouse maintained by the regulated market they try to give one receipt against the value of the proper value of the product okay and this is this receipt given by the warehouse uh, officials or regulated market to the farmer as a warehouse receipt it is a valid receipt where the value of the stored product of the farmers are generally mentioned and this is as this is a valid receipt by this type of organization the farmers may give this receipt again as a security to the banking organizations for taking fresh loan for better or future investment suppose store product is stored for a long period 6 or 7 years in this period the farmers may require some amount of money first thing to meet this cash obligations for day to day life or other way for future investment the where the farmers will get the money instead of selling the product 
So necessarily the farmer may go for the taking fresh loan from the bank by depositing that warehouse receipt given by the warehouse where the value of the commodity or store product is mentioned and against the value of the commodity mentioned there in warehouse receipt 70 to 80 percent of the to total value of, the, of mentioned in the warehouse receipt as they may take as a gift. They may take again as a fresh loan from the bank for his future or better investment. Okay? This is valid receipt. All these things. Then taking the surety. Sureties are generally taken as a grantor or in other way. The bank may also take the sureties. And covering the credit under small loan grantee scheme. This is the another scheme. New scheme are coming on the force in the agricultural sector. That is the deposit insurance and credit guarantee corporation of India. Scheme given by this corporation, deposit insurance and credit guarantee corporation of India. I will give detail about the what is the functioning of the deposit insurance and credit guarantee corporation of India. It is also help the farmers to overcome the risks. This type of corporation. I will give you detail about this deposit insurance and credit guarantee. Corporation of India later on, okay? And these are the some principles, seven principles and as in commonly known as a seven P's of credit in economic viability of the, judging the economic viability of the project in different way as a three hours of, but popularly first one is known as a three hours of credit. And lastly, I am try to tell, I try to tell you here the, what are the procedural formalities generally followed by the banking organization. All the bank organization before disbursement of the loan, they will look for the this type of things. They have to cover all these steps up to up to the final disbursement of the loan. Mm -hmm. Firstly, they try to take the interview of the farmers. Ten steps you see. Interview the farmers. Then they advise the farmer to submit their application. Okay? They take the try to accept the application of the farmer. Third one they try to scrutinize the records that are given by the farmer. Scrutiny of the records is essential. The all are done by whom? By the bank officials. This is duty of the bank official. Then the bank officials in the form of the marketing officer, in the form of the field officer, they try to visit the area that are mentioned by the farmer. Farmer's area, they try to visit before disbursement of the loan. Okay? Then they will check the eligibility criteria of the, whether the farmers follow all the eligibility criteria to take loan or not. Yes, I will give you different types of eligibility criteria are considered by the banking organizations before disbursement of loan and they will check all these eligibility criteria, whether the farmers fulfill all the eligibility criteria or not. Then they will go for the sanctioning of the loan. Then after sanctioning, sanctioning and disbursement, mind it, this is two things. They may sanction, but not disbursement. They sanction the loan, okay? They will give the sanction paper to the farmers that your land loan is sanctioned, okay? Then the farmers are informed to give all the required <coughs> documents after sanctioning loan. Submit all required documents, that is land paper, all these things to us. Then after getting the sanctioning paper from the bank, the farmers will come to deposit all the required documents to the bank. This is the procedure followed by the banking. For your information, I'm giving you here, okay? Then, after sanctioning law, submission of uh, required documents, then the bank will go for the final disbursement of the loan. And earlier, all these activities confined <coughs> along with this. Again, I am mentioning here. Now, this coming other two points. That is this post-credit follow-up measures. That is done by as a supervising of the credit. That is, all the bank officials will look for after disbursement of the loan, post up, post credit follow up measures. That they will check whether the loan is properly utilized or not, or what type of enterprise he select, and what way he go for investing the loans. All the guidelines, all the technical advice also given by the bank officials. And lastly, they will go for the final that is this recovery of the loan and in these are the 10 numbers of steps are generally followed by the bank officials for this version of the credit to the farmers. So all these things 
that is along with the three years of credit we may judge the credit worthiness of the farmer from our enter viability of the enterprise of the farmers that are taken by the farmers as a five as a five c's of credit character capital capacity common sense is not it and likewise we may judge the viability of the projects from this point which are also commonly known as a seven p's of credit and along with this we should know you should know at least the what are the formalities generally observed steps are generally observed by the banking organization for final disbursement of the loan along with the post credit follow up measures do you understand any question